Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we're ready for the event. KPRC TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is KPRC TV. How do you hear me? KPRC, this is Station. I've got you loud and clear. That's great. Mr. Burbank, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, can you start with a, an overview of the mission here and, and anything of any particular interest to us on Earth? Okay, absolutely, Lauren. First off, it's great to have you on board. Um, we have been here, myself, um, Anton Shkaplerov and Anatoly Ivanishin, my two Russian cosmonauts, for just about four weeks now, I guess, uh, today, I, I guess. And, uh, and it's been very, very busy. Space Station is designed and intended at this stage for a crew of six, so we've been at half strength for quite a while. And uh, for us, it's been a very busy time, but uh, obviously a very wonderful experience just the same. Our primary focus so far, at least in the first week, was to hand over with the previous crew and to learn as much as we could about life on board Space Station. Ordinarily, the handover period is between two and four months. We got to jump on it before launch and, and did some of that via video and, uh, and teleconferencing and every other way you could imagine, emails and, and the rest. And uh, then so once we got on board, we had a whirlwind week or so with them and uh, basically put our hands on hardware, watched over their shoulder as they did all the things they do to keep this great space station working and, uh, and uh, tried to learn as much as we could. And since then, uh, we have, on a fairly regular basis, called them to ask them questions when things have come up. Mr. Burbank, what will it be like with that six-person crew uh, once you get it? Are you looking forward to having that company up there and some help, I imagine? Well, Lauren, first off, they're good friends, so it'll be great to have them on board. They're actually going to come here just before uh, the Christmas holidays, so we're going to have them here in time for Christmas and New Year's. And uh, got a few things planned for that. Um, but from the work side of things, it'll also be just wonderful to have their brain power and uh, their horsepower to help us do the things that we do to keep Space Station working and keep the research going. Um, it's, uh, it's been a very busy, like I say, four weeks. And as soon as we get them on board, it's going to be almost busier, I think, because there's so many things we have on our plate between the time they arrive and the time that at least the three of us, our crew, are going to be departing in mid-March. Mr. Burbank, uh, we know the Russians uh, are instrumental now, uh, getting you folks up and down to space. But then I hear about the Chinese on their way to building their own space station. Are, are we sort of in a, a, a new space race? Do we celebrate these achievements uh, of the others? Well, Lauren, my, my feeling on this is that I think humanity belongs in space. I think the more people that can do this, the more countries that can do this, the better off we are as, as human beings. I think right now, if we were to approach this next phase, for example, with the Chinese um, as a space race, race, as we did during the Cold War years uh, in the Apollo program, I don't think necessarily that's the wise thing to do. Those kinds of things will do a lot to light a fire and get us motivated for get anybody motivated to do something big perhaps but it may not be the impetus we need to be in space and stay here for the long term which i think is really our goal so what we're doing on international space station is a much more cooperative en endeavor and uh, we've got 15 nations that are all working on this together and international space station has been going since 1998 we've had a crew on board since 2000 it's going to be populated and doing research by that same complement of international uh, partners all the way out till 2020 and i believe beyond that that's the kind of thing that will give us a long-term space program that will benefit all of us. So, Mr. Burbank, anything particular that, uh, that you would like to see from NASA for the future of space exploration? Obviously, the shuttles are gone now, and I think all of us here are wondering, hey, where, where do we go from here? What's next? No, I, th I think all of us that flew on the space shuttle and all of us that worked in that program um, felt a tinge of regret when the shuttles were retired, but the fact is that the shuttle did the thing that it was exquisitely well designed to do, and that was to build the International Space Station. 
But the space shuttle is not the kind of vehicle if you want to leave low Earth orbit, and that's what I think our next goal should be. So the kinds of research we're doing on space station will answer the questions about how to keep humans healthy and productive in space long enough to go back to the moon to stay and on to Mars and asteroids. Those are the kinds of things. That's where I think our destiny is. So I think NASA's job right now is to put in place and to develop the kinds of capability that'll get you beyond low Earth orbit. We need to continue to do the research that'll support that on space station. But I think the piece that, that includes coming from the surface of planet Earth to low Earth orbit, I think it's very appropriate to now have commercial companies be able to take the ball and, and run with that and uh, let NASA do the next most difficult thing, which is leaving low Earth orbit. I think that's appropriate. I'd like to take this story on a, a different angle, uh, literally. Our, our uh, morning meteorologist, Anthony Anas, loves to show uh, some of the NASA pictures of the day. I mean, you guys have seen dust plumes, storms, volcanoes, but there was one in particular of uh, Antarctica that was taken in early October, which uh, it looked as if the space station, you, you could have been standing on a mountaintop across the way. It was a fascinating view. What has that been like, and does that Antarctica picture ring a bell? Since we've been here, uh, I think we've sent down about 4,500 images, and, and I think I know the one that you're talking about, but I think what I would say is that we're probably, I'm probably not to the level that I need to be to be able to, to do it justice when it comes to Earth photography from, from low Earth orbit. Every time that you float down to the cupola, every time that you go to a window, be it in the U.S. laboratory or in the Russian segment in the service module, you are surprised and your breath's taken away by something that's going by beneath you. And I think the trick is for us who are crew members, who are pilots and engineers typically, or scientists by trade, is to become good enough photographers to be able to capture those images in such a way that it really tells a story for people on the, on the ground. I mean, it is unbelievable, whether it is flying over the North Atlantic and watching the northern lights uh, dancing around, in fact, around the vehicle sometimes, or watching the Swiss Alps come beneath you. Um, there's been some unbelievable views lately of going over southern Chile and Tierra del Fuego. Uh, all of those things will just uh, are just spectacular. Um, Africa, can't say enough about that. Um, and, and I think you're going to continue to see better and better shots, and at least for me, I hope they'll continue to be better. But it's a wonderful place, and it's a wonderful uh, planet that we get the, that we're fortunate enough to be able to see from this vantage point. Well, they are uh, incredibly captivating. I know for for us on Earth, we have uh, just a, a couple of minutes left, sir. I guess. I know you have some of the other crew members coming up right before the holidays. You've got some more friends there with you. What is it like being so far away? I, I think when the crews were flying aboard the Mir space station, for example, or when the crews were flying aboard International Space Station in the earlier days, you were, in fact, physically far away from home, and sometimes you felt far re removed from, from friends and family. On board International Space Station right now, it's not like that. In a very real sense, we're very close to the people that are watching over Space Station. We're very close to our families and friends. I'm actually able to call my family and see them and talk to them more often now on board Space Station than I could in often in the, in the two years or so leading up to flight when we would be traveling overseas and communication would be more difficult. So. In a, in a virtual sense, we're much closer than we than has at least been in the past. So, so that part is, I think, really important. It doesn't mean that when it's time to come home and I get to see my family again for the first time after, you know, five months or so, that it won't be about the best thing that I've ever done. Yeah, that uh, that reunion we can only ima imagine. Mr. Burbank, thank you for your time. Thanks for spending these moments with us. Good luck on the mission, and of course, safe travels back home. Lauren, thanks so much. Thanks for uh, joining us here. It was great talking with you, and I uh, hope we get a chance to do it again. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy, thank you. Thank you, KPRC-TV. Station, we are now resuming operational communications.